Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I'm continuing Man Card Month in my studio with the Brood for You bundle by from the new Stampin' Up! 2020. 2022-2023 annual catalog. Now, this catalog just went live a couple of weeks ago, and it is chock full of awesome new products. And the first thing on my list, because of the beer lover that I'm married to, um, was this Brood For You bundle. It is awesome for man cards and for cards for women who like beer as well. So there's lots of possibilities with this fun bundle, and today I'm going to show you three of them. Okay. All right. Let's pull up my video here and see who is watching. Let's see what's going on here. Facebook has been like acting weird on my iPad lately. Oh, there we go. Oh, Tracy's here. Betty, Connie. Hello, everyone. Hope you all are well. Hi, Dev. How are you? I'm just going to clear. I'm getting all these, um, co these comments coming up on my screen. I can't see. Um, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for saying hi. I really appreciate that you're, um, you're here with me today. And I hope it is beautiful and sunny where you are. It is sunny here, but it got chilly this morning. <laughs> I was shocked that I had to put a jacket on before I went to work. It was a uh, rather chilly breeze this morning but the sun is still shining so I am not complaining all right so we as I said are going to make three projects today I'm um, using the brood for you bundle I'm still on man card so we still got a few more weeks of man card month so I hope you're okay with that um, I love featuring cards that I know people struggle with and I know man cards masculine cards are one that um, a lot of people have trouble with so I'm hoping that this inspires you a little bit and uh, that you enjoy these projects so let me flip the camera and we're gonna get to it okay give me a sec <clears throat> Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to move this up so we're not sagging. There we go. All right, looks good. Yes, you did bring the sun to me, Betty. Thanks for doing that. All right, hello, Jeanette. Hello, Doris. Thank you for sharing, Doris. I really appreciate it. So um, the Brood For You bundle is part of the Hobbies and Recreation section. I love that we have a section dedicated to Hobbies and Recreation in the catalog this year. And um, certainly tasting beer is one of my husband's hobbies. He's, he's not a big, he doesn't drink a lot of beer, he, but he likes trying different brands and different kinds. And he's kind of got a little bit of snobbish taste when it comes to beers. He, uh, there are certain ones that he just will not drink and others that he really enjoys. So this set, as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to get it for him. He, um, it, this, this set was made for him. Let's just put it that way. Actually, both of them on this, actually all three, let's be honest. He's got pretty, um, pretty eclectic taste he um, likes a fine whiskey as well and he is a computer guy so um, this two page spread in the catalog pages 82 and 83 were made for my man so we're gonna focus on this one today um, the cost of this bundle is pretty reasonable as um, stamp and die bundles go it's only $52 here in Canada which is um, a pretty good price as bundles go so let me show you the bundle in a little bit more detail and then we will get going here so here is our stamp set so we can stamp several different beer glasses and of course the beer to go in them. Uh, of course this you could make into a wine glass quite easily, but this is actually my husband's preferred style of beer glass. He has several different um, sizes of them and that's his preferred style. Apparently it tastes better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't ask questions. I just smile and nod. Yes, dear. Um, and then we have a growler, which is for um, taking home draft beer and then some fun sort of punny sentiments. So we're going to see most of these stamps in action today. And then, of course, we have the coordinating dies. So several of the dies cut out the stamped images. Uh, but then we also have dies where we can um, just make die cut beverages as well. And I'll show you a couple of samples with that on it a little bit later. And then, of course, we have this fun little hop and leaf um, accents that you can add to your project. So that is the brew for your bundle. So let's set that aside. See who else has joined us. Hello, Mary Lou. Hi, Penny. Thanks for joining me today. Okay. Whoops. I just <laughs> squirted water all over my grid paper. I took a sip and, uh, yeah, apparently drinking from a straw is, is new. 
I'm just going to slide this over because I'm not quite centered. There we go. Okay. So the first card that we are going to do today um, is this one. Now this is super quick. So I wanted to show you something that you could throw together in 10 minutes or less. Um, it uses some of the elements from last week's video, which was um, the He's All That Specialty DSP. So our focal image on this one is actually one of those laser cut elements from that DSP and a little bit of the paper. So super quick and easy. You will be shocked at how quick and easy this one comes together. So I'm going to start with a piece of Sahara sand cardstock. It is cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to bring in my Sahara Sand ink pad and my beer stein. So we're going to ink that up and we're going to stamp it a few times, kind of coming down the left side of our cardstock panel, just kind of like that. Okay. It's kind of like beer has fallen from the heavens. <laughs> and then we're going to take our foam and we're going to add some frothy foam. Now this is, I'm going to have to move this because I'm not going to be able to look through to get that lined up properly. But these are quite easy to line up. I will say, um, even you know, as I'm sitting here, not able to look directly down on my um, paper, you can still line it up fairly easily. And then we have some little bubbles. We're going to add just sort of randomly around our beer stein. This is really more for texture than anything. So we'll just add a couple of these little guys. That looks good. Maybe I'll do one up here. There we go. And that's all there is to our background. Super quick and easy. All right. And then we are going to layer some DSP and cardstock. So I have here, this is what? One and three quarters. One and three quarters by four inches. This is some of the He's the Man um, DSP. Or he's, he's all that. He's the man. He's the man, I think. And then we have a piece of black cardstock that is one and seven eighths by four. So you're going to have just a narrow border, top and bottom. So we're going to go ahead and layer those. <clears throat> My voice is a little croaky today. I noticed it during third period today. My voice was starting to sound a little rough. So tomorrow is a vocal rest day for me. I'm actually booked off work and I'm going to not talk. I'm actually participating in the virtual incentive trip this week. It was, um, this is the replacement for the canceled incentive trip. Um, and there are a couple of virtual sessions today. So I actually took my personal day so that I could participate in that. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and layer this piece now onto our stamped panel. So we'll add a little bit of glue here. And we're gonna pop that on about an inch up from the bottom and straight. I'm using my grid paper to get it nice and straight. Okay, and then that is going to get layered onto a basic black cardstock mat that is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So it's just again going to have that narrow little border, and I like my borders to match. So I like it when this border matches this border, makes me happy visually. So we're going to go ahead and glue this down. Thanks, Deb. Yeah, I'm looking forward to a day. I, let me tell you, I'm ready for a day off. <laughs> Um, this, this year has been a slog and I was just talking to my principal today and all of us are feeling it. We're just like, okay, can we make it? <laughs> it's just, we have five weeks to go and everybody's just kind of holding on by the fingernails. All right. So next night we're going to glue this onto our card base. This is a piece of Sahara sand cardstock, um, four and a quarter by 11 inches scored in the middle at five and a half. So we'll fold that in half along our score line. And we're going to go ahead and glue our, I'm just going to use a little bit of seal. It's a little bit faster. And we're going to pop this on. Centered, hopefully, and straight. Okay, so there is our card base. Now our focal image is simply one of those laser cut elements from the He's the Man DSP. Uh, we're going to glue it flat on a piece of ma uh, Mango Melody cardstock. Now the actual color in the DSP pack says Crush Curry. I think Mango Melody looks really great with it. I feel like it really makes um, it pop. It could well be Crush Excuse, Chris Curry. Stamp Up says so. It's prob they're probably right. <laughs> but I just liked the extra little pop of, of the, the hint of orange on this one. Um, just to kind of make that those beer signs pop. Okay, so this one says cheers to all your years. Makes a 
fantastic birthday card. In fact, this may I may keep for hubby's birthday in November. So we're going to add a couple of dimensionals here. And we're going to pop this on towards the right side because we had our beer steins coming down the left. So that'll just kind of balance things out here. Okay, and then we're just going to add a little bit of embellishment. I'm avoiding a bow. You're proud of me. <laughs> um, and I'm going to grab my take your pick. And we have some of our uh, rustic metallic dots. So I'm just going to go ahead and add three of them along the left side of my sort of focal strip here. And there we go. How quick and easy was that? All right. Now we, on the inside of this one, um, I added a basic or uh, basic white panel and stamped the beer sign again and added some beer to the glass. You're going to see that in action on another card. So I'm not going to take the time to do that right now. Actually. Yes, I will because I pre-stamped my other one. So let's do that. So here's a piece of basic white and cause I want to show you just how easy it is to, to stamp this, this beer stein. So we're going to ink up our stein and I'm going to stamp it right down in the bottom right corner. Okay. I'm going to add my foam while I have the same color of ink out. So I'm stamping in Sahara sand, um, just to coordinate with my card base. And then I'm going to bring, now I didn't bring the mango melody, uh, ink pad over here. So I'm going to use crash curry, which is okay. It won't be quite the same, but it's not against the, the, the front cover. So that's okay. So I'm just going to line up. This is my beverage. So I'm just going to line this up and stamp super quick and easy. Okay. And then our fun sentiment says another round for your birthday. Now I don't have my black ink, but I will use some early espresso because I can. Um, I probably should use black because that's what I used on the front of the card, but that's okay. You'll get the idea. So we're going to go ahead and stamp that. And I put my um, sentiment down near the bottom this time, just for fun, a little bit different. And there you go. Super cute, right? So we'll just add this to the inside of our card and call it done. Now, how long did that take? Even with me yapping at you, I bet it was less than 10 minutes. Super quick. All right. Hi, Bonnie. How are you? Hi, Pam. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Cheryl. Hello, Yvonne. Thanks for joining me from Missouri. I hope it is as beautiful there as it is here today. It's really a lovely day here. A little chilly, but lovely. So there we go. There is our finished card number one. So we are going to move on. So I'm kind of stepping up the difficulty with each one. We're going to do a fun fold last, but this one here is another fun one. I wanted to get away from all the dark sort of gloomy colors that we tend to use on man cards and show that a man card can also be bright and fun. Um, so I, this reminds me of like hockey team colors, right? We just were in the middle of the hockey playoffs right now, the NHL playoffs, and um, our team was just eliminated. <laughs> so now I don't care, but you know, um, some people still do. And I just thought this would be a fun card for, um, for a guy who is a sports fan. Okay, so here we go. I'll show you how to put this one together. So we are going to start, oh, I didn't pre-stamp these ones. All right, we are gonna stamp these all these beverage glasses. So I have here three uh, die cut hexagons. These are cut using the beautiful shapes dies. And I, this time I'm gonna stamp my images in basic gray. So let me pull out, I've got all my stamps in one little bin here. Uh, I'm gonna stamp off my beer sign so that we can do it in the right color. So I'm gonna stamp the beer stein first in on the largest um, hexagon. And I wanna stamp this so I still have room to stamp the foam, right? I don't wanna stamp it right um, centered or I'm gonna lose my foam, okay? While I have that out, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my foam also in the basic gray. So there we go, okay. Um, then I'm going to add my beer glass on the medium one. Whoop, is that the right one? Yeah, it is, sorry. <laughs> I thought for a minute that was the, uh, the beverage part of this glass, but it's not. So this one I'm gonna stamp a little bit more towards the left, just because of the way my card layout's going to work. And we have another little stamp that has the foam. Where is it? Here it is. Um, so this one is gonna be kind of running down the front of the glass like that. So fun. And then we're going to stamp our last one. Where did I put it? Right in front of me. <laughs> 
Honestly, you guys, sometimes I seriously wonder. So we're going to add this guy kind of right there. This one's going to go a little bit to the right. And again, I'm going to add my foam dripping down the front. Okay. And then we're going to add our beverage, which is the best part, right? So let's pull out our crushed curry. And we'll start with this one just because that's the one I have in front of me. So I'm going to add my beverage. Now I'm going to pull this a little bit closer to me so I can see what I'm doing. I hope it's still on camera. If not, I'll show you in a sec. So I'm just going to line that up and stamp. Okay. And I love the way the stamp actually has um, the the reflection or the highlights from the glass built into it. Okay. So I'm not sure if you can see on the stamp. Here, I'll show you on here. But can you see how these lines are added to it, which shows the the or adds sort of depth and dimension to the glass by stamping the beverage. I think that's really, really thoughtful. Stampin' Up! really thought through this, the images in this set. Okay, so let's add our beer to this one. Right about there. And then finally, this guy. And so when I'm stamping this one, I'm just lining up the bottom of the little... Um, there's like these little, this little bit, the little highlights here. I'm, I'm just lining that up at the bottom and stamping. They're pretty easy to line up. Okay. Hexagons do work really well and they're a different shape, right? It's nice to have something other than circles and squares on projects. Um, I really like sort of mixing it up a little bit. All right. So we've got our stamping done. So we're going to layer here. So I'm starting on, my background is a piece of, uh, the sports fan. What is it? What's it called? And what's it called? He, hey Sports Fan. The Hey Sports Fan DSP. This is from the mini catalog. I'm actually going to be featuring this suite uh, next week. And um, so I cut, I love this sort of blue wood grain pattern. So this piece is four by five and a quarter inches. Okay. And then I have a piece of sweet sorbet um, in color DSP. So one side is very not masculine, but the other side has these great stripes, which works really well for masculine cards. So this is cut to three by five and a quarter. And then I have a piece of crushed curry cardstock that is cut to three and one eighth by five and a quarter. So we're going to layer these first. Okay. So I'm going to have a little bit of a border top and bottom. So we'll go ahead and do that. Stick this guy down. And just make sure we are centered here and straight. Okay, and then that piece is going to get stuck down to our background piece. Again, centered. So again, we'll add a little bit of glue. And we will pop this guy on. Right about there. Okay. All right. Now, before we add our stamped beer, we are going to add a little bit of navy baker's twine. So this is from the sports fan um, baker's twine pack. So I'm going to first fold my twine in half. Okay. I'm going to trim it off my roll just to make it easier to work with. And I kind of want this to go hmm, about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom of the red DSP piece. So I'm going to grab my glue dots and I'm going to add a glue dot right about there to the back of my panel. I'm going to flip it over and press the ends of my baker's twine into the glue dot, run it across the front of the panel. So I kind of get an idea of where I want my second glue dot to go. We'll fold this over. And stick that one down. Okay, and then I'll just trim off this little bit of excess. So that's a great way to add twine without actually winding it and wasting it on the back of your panel. Okay, all right, so we are going to go ahead and glue our beer glasses on. So these two guys are going to kind of go on opposite ends, and then this one's going to go in the middle popped up. Okay, so we're going to glue this guy down first and flat. We're not popping this one up at all. Put that right about there. And then this one is going to go on over here. Just like so. And then this one is going to pop up in the middle. So I'm going to grab a couple of dimensionals and add them to the back of my hexagon here. Hi, Brenda. How are you? 
Thanks for tuning in. So we're gonna pop this on, sort of centered between them, and it's gonna go over top of the um, twine a little bit, and it's gonna be a little bit lower, okay? So we put that on right about there, okay? And then we can go ahead and glue this onto our card base before we finish it. So our card base, I went bright, so this is a piece of crushed curry cardstock. I don't often use a, this bright a card base, but for this card, I just thought it needed it. So we are five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll just fold that in half along our score line. And then we're gonna add a bit of seal to the back of our front panel here. And pop this on to the front of our card base with a nice equal border. Now this one, you'll notice the border is a little bit larger than I had on my layer, which is okay too. Okay, so there we go. Um, we are going to add a stamped image. Now this one I actually had already stamped because for some reason I stamped and die cut two of these. So this one's all good to go. Um, it says I owe you one or several, <laughs> which um, I could say of several people in my life. I've had a lot of people helping me out over the last uh, few weeks here. So I'm going to add a dimensional to the end that is going to overlap the card. And then the end that's going to overlap the hexagon is just going to get a little bit of adhesive. It's not going to have a dimensional because I want it to lie flat. Okay, so we're going to have this running right about there. Okay, just like that. And then we're going to tie a quick little double bow. So to do that, I'm going to take my twine. I'm going to fold it over on itself. Okay, make a loop and then leave a long tail. Bring that tail around and through. Super easy to tie a twine bow. Um, this way with twine works better, I find, than doing the bunny ears thing, uh, because with the bunny ears you get quite a, a bulky knot, and I don't like that when I'm, I'm using twine, so I want my knot to be a little bit more compact. So there is my cute little bow, well, not cute, my manly bow, we don't do cute on masculine cards, we do manly, um, and then that is going to get it here just sort of where the, the twine meets the hexagon there, so we're just going to take a glue dot. Roll it into a little glue bugger here. If I can get it off the roll, there we go. And I'm just gonna kind of press it into the corner where I want my bow to it here, and press it into place. And that way, it's an easy little, it looks like it's tied, right? It looks like somebody wrapped it around and tied it, but nobody did. It's easier to tie this way and it doesn't waste your, your twine, okay? The last little touch on this are some of these fun resin star embellishments, also part of the sports fan um, suite in the mini catalog. So we're just gonna add a couple of each color, well not each, a couple of three colors, the colors that coordinate with our card. Um, so we're gonna take a navy one. There's large and small ones in this, so it's fun to kind of mix up the sizes. Now, these ones are actually Poppy Parade, but look at how great they look against the Sweet Sorbet. Just a shade darker, and they work really, really well like that. Okay, so there we go. Um, again, really simple card, but lots of fun elements and fun color. Okay, a little bit more colorful than your typical masculine card. All right, last one we are going to do is, oh, thank you, Connie, that's so sweet of you. Um, the last one we're going to do is this fun twisted easel card. So it lies flat like this to go in your envelope, but it's so fun because it pops up and sits on your desk like this. So we get this fun sort of pop-up feature and um, you can see part of the inside of the card as it stands up. I love doing easel cards. They're a really easy fun fold, um, but that gives a little, bit, a little bit of something different, right? So let's um, get busy and I will show you how to make this one after I take a bit of water. <laughs> All right, so to start, we need to cut our card base or do a little bit of scoring on our card base. So I'm starting with just your basic uh, measurements for your standard card. So this is five and a half by eight and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter, okay? So really, really a basic, like it doesn't take any extra card stock to make this fold. Okay, now really important as you're doing this that you think about how you want your card to open. Okay, so I want this bottom corner to be able to fold up and in. So when I am looking at my card front, okay, so if I open this up, I'm looking at my card front, I'm going to start scoring from my center score line here and go up to the upper corner, upper right corner. 
okay? Really important that you don't do it the wrong way or your card won't open properly. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> if there is a mistake to be made in card making, I guarantee you I have made it. So I try to troubleshoot them. <laughs> I try to make all the mistakes before you do so I can save you the trouble. Okay, how's that? All right, so I'm lining up. I've got my trimmer here. I'm lining up that center score line in my cutting track. So it's right here. I'll point to it with my bone folder. Okay, so there's my score line. And then I'm also lining up that opposite corner, the upper right corner also in my cutting track. Okay, so once I've got those lined up, I can close my trimmer and go ahead and score. Okay, can you see that score line? Runs from there all the way down to there. Okay, all right. So we're gonna set that aside because we're also gonna need to do some cutting. So while my trimmer is here, we're going to cut our panels for the front. So normally when we layer on a card front, if this were a regular card, we would have our DSP and our cardstock. Um, this one is actually intended to have a little bit larger border. So if I layer these, so I have a narrow border here, but then if I layer this on here, I'll have my typical eighth of an inch border, okay? So we are actually going to cut these on the same diagonal as we did our, as we scored our card base so that we can use them as layers and allow our card to open. Okay. So this piece, let's start with this one. This one is four by five and a quarter inches, which is pretty standard. So I want to cut from the bottom left up to the top right. So I'm going to, again, put it into my trimmer, line up the bottom left corner and the top right corner. Now, this is a really important um, tip. When you go to cut, if you close your trimmer and try to cut from the corner right here, if your blade is at all dull, it's going to tear and not, it's going to mess up your corner. So better way to do it is to start with your blade in the middle of the paper somewhere. So I'm going to close my trimmer. I'm going to press my blade in. I'm going to go down and then back up. Okay. And that's going to give me nice clean corners every time. Okay, so that is that layer. We're gonna do the same thing with our DSP. Now our DSP is three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. So it's a little bit narrow, a little bit smaller than your typical um, panel. So we're gonna do the same thing, bottom left corner and top right, line those up. I'm gonna start with my blade in the center, go up and down, and that will give me nice clean corners except my blade isn't very sharp so it's a really good thing that I did not attempt to go corner to corner with it because it would have for sure messed up my corners I need a new blade time for an order let's just clean that up there we go okay so those are my little tips for cutting diagonals so now we're going to go ahead and layer our um, DSP onto our cardstock. We're gonna have narrow little borders all the way around. I would recommend using liquid glue when you're gluing these on so you have time to kind of wiggle them into position. It'll take a little bit of finagling to get them centered the way you want them. So we'll kind of lay that down and then just give it a little bit of a wiggle. So you have a very narrow, can you see how narrow that border is all the way around? Okay. So once I kind of have it the way I want it, I am going to burnish that and make sure it stays put. Same thing with the other one. So again, we'll add a little bit of glue, get this sort of where we want it, and then kind of wiggle it into place there. Okay, so there are our two panels for the front of our card. So I'm going to bring back my card base. I'm actually going to fold along my score lines. So we'll start by folding in half along our center score line. And then I'm going to take and fold my diagonal. So again, I just want to take my time and make sure I get a nice clean corner. That my fold is nice and crisp. There we go. Okay, so that's how my card is going to stand up. So now that we've got the fold, now we can go ahead and glue these on. It is really helpful to have that folded ahead of time. If you try to glue these and then you may have some trouble if this fold is not perfectly, um, go, doesn't go perfectly corner to corner. So we're going to now add these. So again, I'm going to use a bit of liquid glue. And we'll pop this guy on. And wiggle them into place. Now this one's going to have a little bit more wiggle room because my border is a little bit larger on this one. Okay, and then same thing here. Okay, 
Thanks for sharing, Martine. Hi, Irene. Oh, you lucky soul. You are at the trailer. Is it chilly there? I bet the breeze is cool up there on the lake. All right. So there we go. There is our card front. Okay. Ready to go. Now I have already gone ahead and stamped and die cut and colored all of these just because uh, I didn't want you to have to sit here and watch me do it. You've already seen me stamp the uh, beverages, uh, for the bottles. I just stamped them in early espresso ink. And then I used, um, one of the skin tone blends, number 300 to color them. I just thought they were just the right color for the glass of a, of a beer bottle. So we're going to go ahead. You'll see, I have three, one is for the inside, but we're going to go ahead and adhere these. Now look at this one. Do you see how I kind of went out of the lines here? I'm not sure how well that shows on the camera, but we're going to hide that. So we're going to put that one here where it's going to be hidden. Our other one's going to go up a little bit higher. So they're going to kind of go right about there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. This one's going to glue towards the top. Now the big thing is to make sure that you're not putting glue where it's going to overlap that fold because we do not want to keep our card from opening. Okay, so there is number one. This one's going to kind of go down here. And I'm not going to put glue right up to the, the neck of the bottle here for a reason you'll see in a sec. So we'll put this guy here. Okay, and then we're going to add our beer glasses. So first we have to glue our foam on. So we're going to glue the foam for this one. So I'm going to put just a little bit of glue right along the top edge of my beer sign here. If my glue wants to come out, there we go. So we'll add this one. Oh, the fireplace is on. Yeah, I, I thought it would be cool up there. Isn't it crazy how much colder it got? <laughs> it, like I said, we would be thrilled with this spring weather if it were if we hadn't had like summer weather last weekend. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and add our foam to this one. It's going to go right kind of along the top here. Just like that. Okay, now these guys are going to get popped up on the front of our card. So we're going to just flip these over and add a couple of dimensionals. So our beer stein is going to go right down to the bottom corner, right about there, except it's stuck to my finger. There we go. Get that straight. And then a couple of these. Thanks for sharing, Martine. I really appreciate it. I don't know if I already said that. <laughs> I'm getting old and I can't remember things that I say and what I say and what I don't say, which is not a good thing when you're a high school teacher, let me tell you. <laughs> All right, now we're going to stamp our sentiment. Our sentiment says, oh, alias, which I think is really fun and punny. Um, so we are going to stamp it in early espresso ink on a label die cut from Sahara sand cardstock. So, um, this uses the, all that dies that coordinate with the bundle that I showed you last week. Okay. It's from the, he's the man suite or he's all that he's the man. He's all that, whatever that one, uh, the one I showed you last week. So I'm going to ink this up really well. Cause this is quite a bold font here and I'm going to stamp this right in the center of my label. Just like that. And then we're going to add a little bit of fizz using some Sahara sand. So where are my bubbles go? There they are. So let's just, oh man, I'm like a mess here. I just looked at the camera and saw how cockeyed everything is. Sorry guys. <laughs> I clearly am not good at uh, keeping things in the viewing field. So I'm just going to have a few little bubbles kind of going up from the bottom left. And then I'll do a couple up here as well just to kind of fill in some of the empty space, you know, me and naked sentiments. I like having a little bit of something on there. So then we're going to go ahead and glue this on. Now remember how I said I wasn't putting any glue here. Well, there was a reason for that. So we're going to tuck this in and now this is an important step. Okay. When I glue this, I'm only going to put glue on this bottom corner of my label. I'm not going to put glue all over, right? Cause if I put glue all over, it's going to stick and then my card won't fold open. Okay. So I'm just going to put glue on this bottom bit. And again, I'm using liquid glue just so that I can easily slide it in behind my bottle here. So it's going to go right about there. Just give that a second to set up. 
Okay, and then voila, there is my easel. It's easy to pop open, okay? Now, with any easel card, let me just bring back my sample here for a sec. We have to have something to catch our easel to hold it so that it stands up, right? So here on the inside of this one, I'm actually gonna pop up another bottle, another growler, so that um, it catches. You could use you could use anything really to pop that up, but that's what I decided to use. Now, I wanted to show you what I did on the inside here. So I thought the um, spatter embossing folder would be really fun um, to have with um, with this with this bundle. So. I want to show you how I emboss this. So this is just a piece of basic white cardstock. It's four by five and a quarter inches. And um, it's embossed partially using the spatters embossing folder. So here's the embossing folder. Okay. Um, it's quite a wide folder, right? Now, if I just put this in, put my cardstock in, let me just slide it in here and ran it through as usual. I'm still using a the old blue plate, the blue plate special from the Big Shot, if I just ran this through, I would end up with a line from the edge of the folder on my card, which I don't like, okay? I want it to kind of fade. You see how my spatters kind of fade? So in order to get that result, I put my cardstock into my folder, and when I put my plate in, I actually make sure that the edge of the plate is comes up just before the folder. Okay, so then when you run it through, this plate is beveled, so you're going to get a bit of a gradual fade rather than a harsh line from your embossing folder. Okay, so that's just a little tip. If you want to do like a partially embossed panel um, to avoid getting that embossed line from the folder, that's the way you do it. Okay, all right, we're going to add a little bit of Crush Curry ink to our embossed spatters here just for some little bit of color. Um, so I'm just going to bring in my blending brush. And quickly, uh, just a touch of color here. Okay, I could certainly go darker if I wanted to, but I just want a little hint of color. And then we're going to add our bottle. So we're gonna pop this up. As soon as I find my dimensionals in there, as I knock over five other things, because <laughs> that's how it works around here. And we're gonna add a mini at the top of the bottle. Okay, and then that, if you look here, is going to go right in that bottom corner of my embossed panel here. So we're just going to pop that on right about there. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the another round for your birthday stamp, and we're going to stamp that in early espresso. So we'll ink that up and stamp that somewhere on here, hopefully straight-ish. There we go. And then that gets glued inside our card. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hope you had a good day. I can hear my hubby just got home. I think our food was delivered like 10 minutes before he got home. So I think it's been sitting on the front porch. I really hope the cats didn't get into it. We have like a million stray cats hanging out in our yard because we have two female cats who are fixed, but the boy cats who hang out in our yard haven't figured that out. So they hang out here and uh, I always worry when we get food delivery that <laughs> it's not going to be there when we go to get it. All right. So there is my finished card. Okay. Fun, right? Um, so that is the brood for you bundle. I'm going to bring in these ones and then I'm also going to show you a couple more samples before I go. So there are the three that we made today. Now I'll quick show you a couple more. This is one I posted yesterday, I think. Um, again, a little bit brighter, more colorful than sort of your standard man card. But again, I thought this would be a, a fun one for for some guy or even a gal. I wouldn't. This one has a bow, so maybe it, it should be for a gal. I don't know. Um, here is one that I did that uses only the die. So I didn't stamp anything on this one. Well, I stamped the happy birthday, but um, I die cut the mug from the from some vellum. And same thing for, with the glass. And then I used a couple of different shades of yellow and die cut my beverage and then added my foam. Okay, so a little bit different look for that one. And then here's another one, again, back to your typical man colors um, that I made just using, again, the same images that we used on this one. Just a little bit of fun. Okay, so there are some ideas with the Brood For You bundle. Um, I hope you enjoy these projects. Check it out if you have a beer lover in your life. It certainly is always great to have uh, some cards ready to go once, uh, once those masculine birthdays and Father's Days and things come up. All right. Okay, everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. <laughs> I hope you have a great week, and I will see you again next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.